This is Mike Eli with the yes. Circle Legal Trust, mm -hmm. and I'm here today just to talk about some basic housekeeping issues with Legal Torch and a couple other things that will be able to uh, hopefully help us get on track. Sure. Uh, looks like you got some background noise. Let me uh, just open up my. Okay, can you guys hear me? <laughs> can everybody hear me? Okay. All right. Well, we have uh, a website called um, Legal Torch, and we're going to talk about that today because it's something that we can all use uh, to post good blog comments on, to post our latest verdicts and settlements, something that we can all link back to as a group to build its strength and value. You know, we can make it into a mega site like a fine law or a justia, but better because it's edited and run by attorneys as opposed to content writers and people back, say, in Minnesota who aren't really attorneys. Um, and so we can really make it into something special. And, um, you know, every time I've tried, we've gotten hit with malware or something that's hurt the website. It's just a standard problem that I've been having. Um, but I, I want to get that rolling again. Unfortunately, we... You know, Andre couldn't make it today, so, you know, I wasn't, uh, it's just not working out. He's in uh, South Africa uh, visiting family. It, forgive me, I'm just trying to find the video of bed code so I can, uh, so people can watch this without joining the Hangout, and it just looks like everything has changed. Ah, here we go. All right. Give me one second, guys. But, uh, now... Charlotte, have you met Scroggy yet? You know, you, know, you might as well. I have not, Michael. I've not met him. Okay, well, you know, uh, you guys j just you know introduce yourselves to each other while I try to get this uh, squared away. I just want. Hi, to Charlotte. Hey, Robin. Where are you? Where do you practice? In Los Angeles. See, you're one of those lucky guys that gets out there where it's warm. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess we have that going for us. Hey, I apologize. I've had the flu, so I sound uh, sound kind of ra raspy. But anything we can do to help, uh, certainly let us know. Okay, likewise. Okay, where, where, your, where do you practice? I practice in Birmingham and Huntsville, Alabama. I do primarily uh, personal. Excuse me. I do. I don't do personal injury stuff. I refer it out. But I do, for practice wise, I do domestic work. Okay, great. What about you? Cr criminal defense. As okay. much federal as possible, but I do everything. Great. Mm -hmm. I think guy. you'll find this a good group. This is unusual. Usually we don't have these problems with a hangout, so uh, Mike, uh, Mike does a great job of the group. I think you'll enjoy being a part of it. Okay, great. Hey, Jeff. Okay, so we got Jeff here. Okay. So so, I do thank you. The practice yeah. while I do domestic work. Okay, great. What about you? Cr criminal defense, as okay. much federal as possible, but I do everything. Okay, well, something's Great. wrong here. Mm -hmm. I think you'll find this a good group. This is a Hi, it sounds like somebody ha is watching the uh, the video hangout from a remote location. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. It sounds like that got stopped, but it sounds like what happened was is uh, I don't know if you guys heard the feedback. Yeah, that happens because uh, this uh, basically we have a feature that allows people to remotely view through YouTube, and it's delayed. 
And so you'll hear like a delay. Sometimes people leave their speaker on. It looks like Jeff had his speakers on. I'm not sure who it was. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it was me. I was trying to get, send links both ways to get in. Cool, cool. So, um, look, we're just going to do a quick one today. We don't have a lot of our key players here. Um, but we have a site called Legal Torch, and uh, it really could be a, a real powerhouse. And what I've been doing is assigning subdomains to each member based on what state they're in. So, for example, California uh, is my subdomain, and I'm building out Los Angeles and all the other cities for that subdomain to make it into like a, a standalone website that's for different areas of law. And of course, I'm building out the personal injury section, but now we can have Scroggy come in and do the criminal section. But in addition to that, what I want to do is try to set up the main domain, you know, the, the home page. Uh, with that navigation similar to like a Justia or a Find Law, where we have a question and answer section like Avo has, uh, to where we have a place just where we can post articles, you know, so you don't have to go crazy trying to post them on your own subdomain. Just have a real strong uh, main domain that has good quality articles. We'll set up like a criminal, divorce, PI, and have it all set up with a drop down menu where you can just log in, drop in an article. Verdicts and settlements, your latest verdict or settlement, drop it in. We can become another verdict search. You know, if we really wanted to, we could do it our, ourselves without having people pay, you know, 50 bucks to access it like they do on Westlaw. Um, insurance companies would use it. It would generate traffic. These are all traffic generators, major, major signal to Google. Um, let me see here. Uh, and then we see here, um, in Charlotte, the problem is, um, is that when we do these YouTube events, they go, uh, they automatically get, uh, they automatically just get sent to uh, YouTube. Okay. I'm not really sure. We'll talk about it afterwards. I'll try to figure something out. Um, anyways, the, uh, the legal torch, uh, you know, it needs backlinks to really make it more authoritative and, and to make you know, also act as a, a recruiting tool to get more people involved in our group. You know, once they see, oh yeah, Legal Torch is cranking. You know, because we have Circle Legal Trust, but that's more for attorneys. That's more for us, to where we can help each other with marketing. And I've really tried to separate the two because it is really more marketing SEO type stuff, and I don't want it to dilute our strength as attorneys or make it look spammy. Um, so, you know, it's a it's a lot of value as a traffic generator and helping us build connections. But as far as ranking and things like that through organic, the, the legal torch should be much more of, a, of an effective tool because it's lawyers helping consumers, and that's really our end game. And so uh, that's something that we really need to focus on as a group. I still need to get somebody to help me uh, moderate comments because we're going to get a lot of comments from people. Um, so like we could assign it like once a month, like... Scroggy does comments, you know, like once a day he logs in, and once a month maybe Charlotte does. We rotate it so none of us are getting overwhelmed because we do have practices. Um, but it also gives each of you an opportunity to learn how to use WordPress, which is really what I want. I mean, we all really should be using WordPress because it's so simple and so easy, and then we're all on the same page. We all kind of, we all kind of are doing the same kind of thing. So if one of you guys has a problem or you have a technical issue on a weekend, your site goes down, you can call me or one of the other members. And we can at least, even if we can't fix it, give each other some support, which is always helpful. Uh, Tony's had situations where he needed support on weekends, and I was able to help him walk him through some stuff and at least throw some ideas out there instead of just being naked with nothing. So once we all are kind of using the same platforms, it makes it a lot easier. Hey, Mike. Uh, yeah. On answering and moderating the comments, are you talking about on legal the main Legal Torch site and not the... State specific sites. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because you that's what you're referring to, correct? Yeah. Yeah. The, the main legal torch domain uh, without subdomains. Then of course you would just monitor your own subdomains. That, that yeah. Is, so uh, it's the sharing the main site one that you're talking. Yeah. About. Yeah. Because the where, main site's going to be our bread and butter. Where are the uh, comments going, and what comment system is being used? I mean, it says you have to yeah. log in to comment. Yeah, it's just a standard WordPress site. So when you when you log into the dashboard and you look in the upper left, it'll say new comments. You just click on that, and it'll take you to each page that shows you the new comments. And a lot of times it's just pure spam. So you just you know click bulk, 
delete, bulk delete, bulk delete until you find a decent comment and you leave that one unchecked and delete all the other ones. You can make it go really quick. If you do it, I mean, like, click, click, click. We set it up where you could just have them forwarded to an email address rather than uh, actually having to log into the site? I doubt it, I, you know, because you still have to log in. I doubt there's a way to, to have comments go to an email, but Andre may know of a way. I mean, I know that it would it can update you that you have new comments. You know, as an administrator, you can be alerted that there are comments, but you still have to log into the site to make the, the edits. And I'm sure every day you're going to have comments. It's going to be a spammer or something. No matter what you do with a blog to try to eliminate spam, you're going to get stuff in queue that you don't want. But if you can be informed, I mean, if you can see what the comments are, you can decide whether or not you have to log on as opposed to having to log on every day. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I think you're going to want to log on every day just to get rid of the spam. Just so you clean it up. But the spams aren't going to show up, are they? Well, they don't show up in comments. Everything goes to queue. So nothing will show up in comments either until you go in and approve it as an editor. That's why we need editors. Yeah, but you wouldn't but, have to... I mean, if you know that there's three days of spam, you don't have to clean it up every day. You could just wait the three days. You could, but then you have like 25,000 comments or something. You know, you got to go through each one. It's better to do it every day because otherwise you'll be stuck with a ton of work. It's... But I, I mean, I know what you're saying. It's, I found the most efficient way is just to go in every day, delete out the garbage, approve whatever you think is decent, respond, because a lot of times you'll get responses to other comments that were posted that you may have posted. Um, you know, the engagement's kind of important. But that's all really minor stuff. Um, the most important thing is that we have, you know, somebody actively monitoring the, the, the comments. And then... We need to assign, you know, projects like, for example, you know, let's build out the criminal law section. You know, let's let's get some stuff done there. You know, so, you know, let's get somebody into the criminal law section, um, adding a description to each category, adding the categories. What categories are we going to have under criminal law? You know, that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, we can do all that uh, using um, subfolders as opposed to subdomains. You know. Um, so that's kind of where I'm where I'm thinking we go, and then verdicts and settlements, guys. You know, get get together your verdicts and settlements and type them up, and let's get them on the site. You know, we can, we can definitely that'll definitely be awesome, and then just link it back to your to your main site, get some links. Um, that's a really great way uh, to go. And let me see here. One second. I'm just having some connectivity issues. All right. Now the other thing is, is um, you know, the semantic web is something a lot of you guys know about, but not all of us know that you know the same amount of information about. But the semantic web is basically your brand mentions. The more time your brand is mentioned uh, on relevant sites throughout the internet, the higher uh, chances are of you being able to rank in organic search. Now it's part of the algorithm, and eventually backlinks will probably take a back seat to brand mentions. Google's going to get smart enough to understand that. And so publications like, you know, um, industry-leading magazines and stuff like that are going to sort of become the new, the new thing. And so um, I've started, you know, the process of building out a couple of publications for us. One of them is the Colt Journal. Our first edition was released in Las Vegas. But I also want to do a, a journal for each major practice area. So you guys can break off into groups. For example, Family Law Magazine, Criminal Defense Magazine, Personal Injury Magazine. They're all subsidiaries of, of the circle, you know, because we're all using the same technology and helping each other. But now you guys can break off into your own sections um, and build out these publications. And we can elect, you know, like a president of each chapter to, to be the editor for a year, for example. And then we need to start having awards, you know, who is the criminal defense attorney of the year? That's big stuff, man, you put that on your website. Uh, who is the uh, cruise ship attorney of the year? You know, I got elected cruise ship attorney of the year once by a Hollywood Weekly magazine. So we can do the same thing. These organizations like ABOTA are becoming like dinosaurs, uh, but they have great publications. And ABA has a big reach as well. We should be able to do the same thing. So we'll have a main magazine, Colt Journal, which will will have all of the practice areas in one journal, like ABA. 
talk about different things, politics, law, whatever recent events are that the ABA would discuss, we can sort of do the same thing. Um, but then beyond that, we have our, our individual magazines, criminal, family law, all these other magazines that are PDF, which are crawlable, which Google indexes uh, at, you know, as treatises, uh, which other people will then link to those PDFs, and our links will be embedded in those PDFs as well as our authorship signals. So we will become our own ABA journal. We'll become our own criminal defense magazine or California lawyer magazine, for example. And at some point, yes, guys, I'm going to have to start charging a fee to hire some people to help us with this stuff. But right now, as we're just in our infancy, you know, Steve Sweat and I can teach you how to use the editor program uh, to, uh, to, to do your own magazine. Because the idea is, is I want one of you to be in charge of the publication each each month. So Charlotte would be in charge of Family Law Magazine month one. And then her job is to be the editor, basically. And she would go in and upload the content that people are going to email her, <coughs> edit it to make sure it's grammatically correct. And she gets to be on the, on the home page. You know, she is the, of the, of the month, she is the one. And so a great way to get uh, advertising. Um, and also, um, I'll start our sponsors like Eric Inga and Amberland. I will post ads for them at, at no charge, you know, for now. That's going to help them and since they're helping us. And the brand mentions and associations will help us get followers online on Google Plus because people will see we're connected and we know the hitters and, and they're in our magazine so we, it helps all of us um, and then at some point um, you know I'll be in a position I'll talk with Seth Price and we'll try to come up with something some kind of reasonable membership fee to where I can hire like an in-house editor who can really run these mags for us but for now, I want you to learn how to use the programs, the PDF and the Adobe's, not necessarily because you know we need free workers, because it'd probably be faster for me and Steve to just do it all ourselves instead of trying to train people, but that I want to teach each one of you how to have your own firm magazines. So you can do like a bi-monthly firm magazine that you can email out to your, your clients and prospects, like uh, what Gerard and Keese is doing. I mean, you know, he just has his own magazine and He's a billionaire, so he can afford it. He probably has his own crew of editors. But we can do things on a smaller scale and still achieve the same effect. That's the beauty of Google. It's the great equalizer. You know, uh, you can hire people who aren't as good as us to do a lot of stuff, but they won't do it as well. And we can do things um, better and be more elite and still get more bang out of it. And so you all should have your own firm magazines, and then you can embed that file into your website, which is really awesome. So people click on the thumbnails, and here's a magazine for November, December, you know, and then like a guy like Scroggy would, you know, throw in some ads in there for a court reporter, you know, and build some connections with people who have legal-related sites who may link back to them some other time, you know. And uh, eventually, people are going to want to pay to be included in your magazines, and, and you know, throw a few bucks aside a month and have some high school or college kid or law student come in and edit for you and uh, you know do the billing for you you could actually make a magazine that becomes successful so um, in the interim you know the stuff that, that I'm trying to do is a little bit bigger scale where we we're really doing a real magazine it's a lot of work and it, it would be very expensive to pay someone but if we can delegate things to each other we shouldn't have a problem but you need to learn the technology and so Steve Sweat is really good at it. We did a tutorial already at the Las Vegas convention, which you should all watch, um, the Steve Sweat one. I think there were like three or four sessions. Just you know, just find the video that has Steve Sweat and Andre doing the, uh, the video tutorial on how to do your own magazine. Because it's not just a magazine, you can do an ebook too. So Charlotte, if you've been writing a treatise on divorce law or something, you can make it into an ebook. You know, download the free ebook. You know, put a thumbnail up of it. You've seen them on other people's websites. It looks very impressive. It's it's like Flash or Guy Fridays or something. You know, the more Flash you have, it looks cool on your site. So having a having a free downloadable ebook is something you'll also be able to do from from the stuff or technology we're going to be sharing. Hey Mike, you're yeah. basically Legal Torch is going to compete with LegalExaminer.com. That kind of approach. Uh, Legal Torch uh, would be. Uh, I'm not sure what Legal Examiner is, Jeff. I'm going to send you a link right now. The cool thing about Legal Torch 
you know, that we really have going for us is that each member of the Circle of Legal Trust can link back to it from their site and, and pretty much overnight make it into an authority law site. But what I, you know, what I want to do is is make, uh, you know, get the navigation set up to where we can do some cool stuff with it. I'm taking a look here at Legal Examiner. Legal Examiner. Yeah, this looks pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, this is actually a great way to set it up. But the way they have it, I mean, if you go farther into it, they have a main site and then they have regional ones. Yeah, but this uh, is pretty much just personal injury, it looks like, in the categories. So our categories would be set up a little different. If you like yeah, but the same, criminal. similar type. Yeah, and then on the left, I love the latest on Legal Examiner. And see, this is how you guys... This is what makes the site valuable because if it has 150 really high quality links to the home page. Well, everybody wants their name to show up on the home page. So if you guys click on the on the sidebar, Jeff provided a link for Legal Examiner. Pretty cool. And basically, whoever wrote the most recent article, well, the profile to his section on the website shows up at the very top. And then there's a link. It says car mechanic. Invents life-saving labor and delivery device. Okay, cool. So what happens is he's got a thumbnail picture, kind of looks like a Google result, like a you know, like what you would see in a rich snippet. And then someone would. What will happen now is since that link is there, that link to that article is getting link juice from the home page and traffic. So when someone clicks on that, it takes you to his profile. Well, same thing. The link juice is now flowing from you know into his profile. In, into the site, which is making him a stronger presence. Same concept with social sites. The more you're on the home page of Google Plus, uh, you know, the more juice you're getting from the home page. So if you have a hot article that gets shared a lot, it's going to make your profile stronger. As as far as when you put a link up on your profile, it gets juice faster and, and stronger juice. Same concept behind what's going on here. And this is something you know. What's cool about this is it looks pretty basic, pretty simple. And each member could rotate in their control and editing of the site and learning and, and be learning the technology to where it, it's like second nature to you. And as you scroll down, like it's got regional sites. Well, that would be the subdomains. Like if you scroll down the bottom, it's got like Alabama, Alaska, Arizona. And then you click on the plus, and then it has a drop down to each city or county. This is stuff we can be doing with Legal Torch for sure. Great idea, Jeff. I love it. And this is what we need to be doing. Absolutely. And, um, you know, we could be posting our PDFs. It could be a section for the latest PDFs that have come out, the latest magazine. And then you guys can also be posting your firm magazines onto the site as well of your profile. So you could really build out a strong social presence with Legal Torch uh, in a very similar way that Legal Examiner is doing it. Yeah, I really like the way they set it up. This is really cool. And it looks like it's pretty much just an injury site. Uh, the problem I have with a lot of these sites is they always want to charge an arm and a leg. Um, and I'm trying to get away from commercial because I, I honestly think Google doesn't like it when anybody else is making money off the Internet but them. And, you know, because their model is to make money off pay-per-click. And so if you're paying a service like Legal Examiner to be able to post articles, I just don't think, you know, I think that at some point Google could just decide that that's gaming the system or spamming, you know, whatever, under the guise of that to try to hurt the rankings. But I think if it's a volunteer, non-commercial enterprise, you know, at least until we can get the thing built out, it's probably the better way to go. And they did a big rehaul on their site. Looks pretty sick. Because I'm on the Wayback Machine, and in 2012, it looked a whole lot different. It, it didn't look anywhere near as slick, and it, I think they used to basically repost content from the lawyer's individual blog, or maybe a snippet of their actual blog post. I think yeah. it's the way it used to work. Well, it looks like what it is going on is there's um, they have a subdomain set up for each guy, kind of like what we're doing already. Um, and then the subdomain uh, is where all the stuff is getting posted to. 
it's kind of cool. Um, it looks pretty tight, actually. I mean, I'm looking right now at uh, the one for Lansing, Michigan, and that's David Middleman. It's got his social stuff. It's it looks pretty cool. The graphics are tight. He's basically doing the same thing, guys. Just post the stuff, blog posts. Um, you could actually link to your subdomain down there at the bottom. But I also believe that we should be posting, we should have an articles and news section on the main part of the site so we can drive traffic to the main part of the site and make it more popular as opposed to just having links to the subdomains. I think people should be able to post verdicts and settlements, articles and news on the main part of the site as a subdomain. Uh, so a little bit different than what they're doing, but you know we don't want to copy them. We want to make it better. No, but I think they've adapted to what Google wants from the way their site used to be to what it is now. Definitely, I think you're right. I think it looks really good, man. I mean, this is really clean. I actually like it better than Fine Law um, for a lot of reasons, but the main reason is because it actually has real attorneys. You know, with Find Law, you got to pay some content writer or you know, be part of their blog network. And I just think eventually Google's going to come down on all that. I mean, because it's not even real attorneys. It's just, you know, they just have a bunch of websites that they have access to, you know, people over at that company. And they'll just add your article to one of your competitors' blogs as long as you're part of the blog network. And, you know, you guys may not even have any relationship or connection or even know each other. And I just don't think that's the right approach. And I honestly think we need to know each other, trust each other. Because that's the whole point of page rank, and, and you know, a backlink is based on a vote. And how is it really a valid backlink if it's just you paid a thousand dollars a month to be part of a blog network? No, that's crazy. And so I, I just think if we do it this way, like Jeff is suggesting, we're in the clear, and we're actually providing something of value that's not written by some guy in the Philippines or wherever. You know, it's really you that wrote it, and it was really edited by an attorney. And, it just makes it more legit. And, you know, if we just combine all the stuff together with what we're doing on Google+, Plus, I mean, all of our guys pretty much are all in the top slots on Google+. Plus. I mean, we're just going to become a powerhouse. I mean, Circle Legal Trust will eventually just take over. You know, nobody's going to be able to compete with us because we're, we're, you know, it's out with the old and in with the new. And we're always at the cutting edge because we're always having guys like Eric and Trap Hagen and Amerland. I mean, we're, all, we're there, guys. Somebody can try to start a copy organization, but they'll never have our crazy personalities. They won't have our history and our number of followers and all the stuff that we've already got. We, we, we started a long time ago. So for somebody to come along and try to copy us, it's not going to happen. You know, And, and, they're, and they're never going to have a, a driving force like me I mean, because I'm, I'm just kind of a really driven guy. You know, It's just not going to happen. Everybody's got an angle. They're trying to find a way to make money out of it. And I'm like, screw the money. Let's try to find a way to make this work. You know, we'll talk about the money and stuff later. Let's let's come up with a solution. And once we get it all figured out and we have it all squared away, you know, we can talk about you know hiring an editor or something later. And you know, Seth's constantly pushing me to charge money. And, and my attitude is, is let's wait till we build it out some more and, and we have something that's really solid, and then we can talk about bringing on some help. Uh, and, but you know, it doesn't need to be for profit because we all make money from phone calls and from the ranking we're going to get anyways. So you know, I'm not interested in starting a marketing company. You know, that's, that's not what this is about. You know, this is about us reaching clients and using this platform to get to them. So Mike, any other can I questions? say something? Charlotte, go ahead. I was just going to say, how do we get an access so that we actually know who's responsible for what for us to get this off the ground? Well, you know, I've got to talk with Andre about redesigning the template to, to be more like Jeff's you know, sample that he sent. Um, and I just need to get you guys all logins, admin logins, which is no big deal. And then what we'll do is we'll just rotate it. Like, you know, every, like, we have 12 guys. One guy handles it one month. One guy handles it the next month. And... Coaching is provided by Andre or I. If you have a problem, you just hail me in and we'll walk through it together. You, know, you learn you learn by teaching anyway, so you know, I, I'm all for it. If I can learn more or help somebody, and we, we might run across a problem that I've never experienced, and that's good for us. We'll, we'll resolve it. But, um, you know, we've I got think something. If we all did, if we took all 12 of us, 
and just one of us did one major thing for this site, and then we took a month, I think that, that would go a long way to progress us further. Well, I think the problem is, is that we have more PI attorneys than we do anything else. Well, that's a good. That's I mean, good I think point. what six or seven are all PI. I don't know, but I, you know, I, I am. I'm trying to. I'm trying to reach out to, to non-PI guys, and, and and you guys who are not PI attorneys can really help in that regard by actively trying to you know reach out to people who have decent websites, who kind of get it, and have some decent followers, who are actually already. You know, have a presence on Google Plus, Twitter, whatever. People who actually kind of get it already. Because again, I don't want in-house marketers. I'm not interested in, in helping some in-house marketer make a bunch of money. I want to teach lawyers how to run their marketing so they don't get screwed ever again. <clears throat> so there's never a panda or penguin disaster ever again. Because that's exactly what's going to happen if you guys don't take charge of your own marketing. Period. That's just the way it is. So. Um, you know, if you can reach out to those types of people, divorce, bankruptcy, you know, help me recruit them, that, that, is, that would be very helpful. And I think also by having, by rotating the leadership on these magazines and other projects to where you'll get more presence, it won't just be Mike Eline, Circle of Legal Trust, I want it to be the Circle of Legal Trust, I want it to be all of us getting mentions and, and out there in the forefront. So, you know, we'll put your face on the magazine because you're the editor for that month. And then again, we need to start having uh, votes once once a month. We need to come up with a trophy uh, that you can embed in your website, and we ha and criteria. So Jeff, you're a technical guy. Help us come up with some criteria of how we can vote to pick divorce attorney of the year or divorce attorney of the month, criminal attorney of the year, whatever it is. If we're going to do a yearly award, a monthly award, probably yearly is better. It looks more niche. I mean, setting that up is pretty simple. Is this which are you going to are you talking about on Torch or on Circle of Legal Trust? Uh, it would be uh, you know Legal Torch because it's going to be more about <clears throat> something that we've done, and that's why we need the criteria. Uh, you know, something that we've done over the year that, that makes us stand out, uh, you know, for consumers, for victims, or for clients. Something we've done where other attorneys have decided we're going to vote. Jeff Lapin, you know, attorney of the year because because of his involvement in charity, because of the pro bono cases that he's taken on, because of this verdict and settlement. Here's a link. Uh, Legal Torch talks about the case that he did, to this news interview that he did that, that discussed a, or to this great blog post that he did that discussed a, a current issue of, of major importance uh, that got a thousand hits, for example. You know, some kind of criteria that we have. That's solid. That's a little different than, for example, we have the Consumer Attorneys Association of Los Angeles out in um, here, and it's for PI attorneys. And basically, it's all the trial attorneys who donate tons of money and have booths set up, miraculously get elected trial attorney of the year by their peers, and they just rotate. You know, multiple trial attorney of the year. Well, you know, there's no reason why we can't do the same thing, but look. It's almost impossible to even get a jury trial nowadays. Like, the whole LA court system is destroyed. So you're not going to get into a VOTA, the American Board of Trial Advocates, anymore. Forget it. They're all like 80 year old guys who are dying, and the egos are so big they might as well fill them with helium and fly them up to the moon. You know, we need guys who are down to earth people who really want to reach out to consumers who may not have tried any cases, but they may have settled a case that, that uh, was questionable for big money or they may have helped somebody pro bono in a criminal case uh, who got you know really their rights violated and nobody else would help them because they were handicapped because they were black or because they were mentally retarded and difficult to deal with you know so if you guys can come up with some kind of a criteria I mean, collectively form your own groups you know don't totally rely on me for all this I mean, Jeff and Charlotte and the other guys I mean, come, let's come up with some ideas together um, is a group of what our criteria needs to be across the board, and we'll elect our divorce attorney of the year, our bankruptcy attorney of the year, our PI attorney of the year, criminal, whatever it's going to be, and we'll have like we'll have Andre or somebody help us design some cool trophies that are embeddable that we can embed into our <coughs> website that says you know, legal torch divorce attorney of the year. Click here, it takes you to a page that talks like 
like in the military, we have what's called like a, like a unit citation, or, a, or when you get a Medal of Honor, there's a citation the president will read off, you know, for outstanding valor, you know, over and above the line of duty for an attorney. Jeff Lapin, you know, trampled through, you know, a very dangerous part of the city to sign up this client, and you know, he's getting shot at, and you know, helped this client, and you know, he's on the news, you know, rescued someone from a car, whatever it's going to be, you know. Um, we have a really cool citation, so when it gets embedded on your website, people can click to it. It talks about why you were elected, what the criteria was for picking you. It's huge because now it's an award them you to can be talk all about. Serious? What's that? You want them to vote all serious awards, or I mean, and well, I, just off the top of my head, I mean, like uh, uh, most well armed attorney. <laughs> I mean, well, that's just off the top of my head. Th that could be something we could put maybe on the circle of legal trust, like do a comedy section. But for legal torts, let's keep it serious. Let's let's have something that's really industry recognized like wow these guys really are they really have serious criteria and they're really going after uh, you know helping consumers in some way that makes them stand out and then what's going to happen is you know it's going to get picked up by a newspaper you know probably by our buddy over at 24 7 press release you know it's going to get picked up by somebody we know and it's going to become more popular and it's going to steamroll before we have more and more members wanting to join and so if Ginsburg is in charge of the bankruptcy section and somebody contacts me and says I want to join, I can send Ginsburg an email and say, can you vet this guy? And uh, if he says he's okay, it goes to a vote after we tried him out and they can become a full patch member and they get a patch on their website that says that they're a member of the Circle Legal Trust that links back to Web of Trust that shows they're listed on the website and make it a no-follow link so it doesn't look like we're trying to manipulate any search engine rankings. Because you know, I'm not trying to get like backlinks. I just want, I want people to be able to prove that they're a member. Because anybody can put a patch on their website, but if you click on the patch, it's got to take you to a website that actually shows you're part of our membership. And so that's that's the idea behind the patch to prove that you're really in. And so it'll start to steamroll, and we're going to have a lot of guys and gals who want to become members. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what I would want to do if it's a bankruptcy guy, well, clearly Ginsburg's got to check his site out and make sure it's squared away, it's got the right content, it's, it's a good bankruptcy type site. And, of course, Ginsburg now has a source of maybe a link or you put an article up on the guy's site or they can do a bantering session, discuss a jurisdictional issue between bankruptcy laws and their states, do a model bar exam question and answer based on their state's law. There's so many things you guys can be doing that nobody else is doing. We could just clean up right now if we were doing it. Um, but it's going to take delegation. And that's why we set this up with sort of a quasi-military biker <clears throat> kind of a structure where you, you, know, you have hangout, hangarounds, prospects, where you have members, full patch, you know, um, and then you have the chapter heads. So um, now I want to start actually, you know, getting you guys to sort of take the idea a little more seriously about being ahead of your own group and mentoring you into becoming like little mini mics and, and br helping branch the organization out like a like a hell's angels for lawyers, you know, where it becomes the in thing. Everybody wants to have the patch. Everybody wants to be a member. It's the cool thing to do. We do our yearly Las Vegas hangouts. Maybe we start making some real money and we do them in Hawaii or you know the Bahamas, whatever. But the idea is 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 to replace these antiquated organizations like ABA or ABODA because that's the past. You know, getting trials in California, forget about it. It's not going to happen. And if you do go to trial, you're going to have a bunch of pissed off jurors anyways. Uh, because if you have to take a case to trial, probably a case that you're not going to win any case is the insurance company would already settled with you. Or, it, you know, as a PI lawyer, but as a criminal lawyer, I mean, the prosecutor's going to know that they're not going to have a snowball's chance in hell in winning, and they're going to want to try to resolve it somehow uh, with you, with a plea bargain, or something else. You know, maybe get it dismissed if you're lucky, but you get the idea. It's going to be harder and harder and harder, unless you're a criminal attorney, to really get. I and mean, for a civil lawyer to get a trial, it's almost impossible. So these other organizations that, that base themselves on, oh, I'm the greatest trial attorney in the world, 
well, well, that's wonderful, but there aren't really that many trials, and you're 80 years old, you don't have any energy, and you're delegating all your stuff to some law student anyways. You're not, you're at the golf, you know, course. You're not even practicing like that. You're weird today. I mean, people aren't stupid. I mean, they know what's up. So <clears throat> we should be able to replace these old antiquated organizations using technology and social media. And so it shouldn't be a problem. We could really make this into a juggernaut and take advantage now. Well, you know, we're, not, we're not really paying any money or anything. It's just time getting into the front end of this. And you guys are, you know, lifetime members as long as you just keep on, keep on participating. Um, does anybody have any questions? Hey, Mike, I have a question, and I've never gotten anybody to give me an answer. I mean, I was on Legal Torch. There's not a whole bunch of content there now. There's what not. would be? I mean, I know Google penalizing duplicate content, but populating it with blog posts that people have already done. I mean, no, no at, don't do that. No, that's, but you look at business to community; yeah, they do you. it all the time. Yeah, but and they I get mean, hurt too. Yeah, that's, that's a definite. No, no, you should only be posting original content. But they're still. I mean, at least when you can still check the the PR ring. I mean, they were still a six or seven, even after the second penguin. So they didn't get hit that hard. So I just I got bounced off again. Yeah, um, uh, Jeff, uh, page rank hasn't been updated in about a year, um, but absolutely duplicate content is of no value to Google. And Matt Cutts has made that statement very clear, and Eric Inga will verify that. Well, I, he hasn't. I don't think that's exactly what he said. I mean, it, I think it's depending on how it's used. If it's a snippet, if it's a snippet, you're probably okay. But posting the same exact content site to site with backlinks in it, uh, Google looks at that as an attempt to manipulate the search engine rankings. So putting, you know, duplicate content is just a bad idea, period. Don't do it. Put original content only, um, and we'll just slowly populate the site. That's just the way, you know, you should, and don't do that on your own website either, Jeff. Don't think that's... Um, no, I'm not doing it. I just, I mean, it, they still rank high. I mean, Google has not really penalized that. Well, you don't know that. You know, they may have well, other ranking search engine signals. thing, and they come up in the in the first page. Yeah, they may have other ranking signals that are helping them out. Um, but just like you know, I had other people on here before saying, "Oh, well, don't worry about your site. You know, if it, if you didn't lose any ranking in the last Penguin update, don't just leave it alone until you lose ranking." That's that's one of the. Wait, I mean, HubSpot's doing the same thing. I mean, so some of these major sites aren't taking hits. Well, you don't. And I, know and I don't understand why they're not doing it. I'm not. I'm not using duplicate content. I just yeah. don't understand why they're not taking a hit. Because they have overriding signals, and, and that's something that's been explained before by Eric. You know, if you have overriding signals, it can help override a potential penalty. But it's not worth risking a penalty. It's not worth risking getting dragged down. And, and really, it doesn't help anybody. How does posting something that someone can find on another site help? Our site, it really doesn't. If it's a, now, if it's a link to a great article that's in a citation in a footer to a document that you relied on to write your article, that's fantastic because it's an original piece. But just posting duplicate content isn't going to help any of us. Um, and you know, it, but if you do have a lot of already good ranking signals, it may not hurt you, but it's not helping you. Um, so, you know, just like once a week, throw a blog post up on the on Legal Torch, something cool. You know, all of us should do the same thing, Just to, and then you can link back to other articles on your site as, or my site or someone else's site. I don't really care. Yet the idea is is just to be constantly adding some fresh content to the divorce section, to the criminal section, to each particular section of the site. That's all. You know, and, and in time we'll build it out. But the problem is right now is the site just to me it doesn't have the look that I want. I don't think it's really consumer friendly. I, I think the link you sent us, Jeff, looks pretty sick. I think that's the one we should be using, that same kind of look. And I'm gonna talk to Andre about it. I know he's gonna watch this video later, so hopefully he'll he'll see it. Um, but man, Jeff, that's that's exactly where I'm headed with this. I think that's a terrific way to go. That format, that layout is terrific. And then you guys just all have your own logins, you know, and you all just log in and add content at will. 
And then you have your own separate subdomains as well that you also can have, which will give you additional ranking authority. But all of us should make an active effort to write a cool article and link back to the home page of, of uh, Legal Torch magazines and try to give it some authority. You know, so when other members, you know, when there is another page rank update, it actually has more than a page rank three, like a four or a five, something decent. And you know, other people go, oh wow, I'd love to get an article on that site. You know what I mean? I want to join the Circle of Legal Trust. Because the more members we have, it's not just helping us rank like because we have backlinks, but it's a social signal <coughs> you guys. I mean social signals we're getting are pretty incredible. And and as they start to take more prevalence, we're already in the driver's seat. And it'll it will it will snowball. It absolutely will. I mean, we built this from just me and a couple guys and already we've got people constantly wanting to get in. And I did uh, invite uh, Kent McCauley, but I guess he's already gone. We've got another attorney, I believe he's a criminal defense attorney in Colorado. Cool dude. Um, another great source for guys, you know, a lot, a lot of you guys. And, and I know we have too many PI guys, so help me, uh, help me find some bankruptcy guys and some criminal guys and some other guys who do other stuff. Let's get them in the group. <clears throat> I'm not interested in just having a bunch of PI lawyers. And, there, and, and again, there's plenty of crossovers, like a bar exam question. So, um, you know, there's, there's, there's criminal and civil implications to an assault or a battery. So there's no reason why we couldn't be posting articles to, to discuss that, the differences. Uh, or in a bankruptcy case, you know, uh, what, what, are, what are the ramifications of a personal injury claim or even, or even court-ordered uh, restitution payments in a bankruptcy case? I mean, this is stuff that actually helps people. It's not stuff like many people are injured each year in motorcycle accidents. Those retarded articles like that. Google doesn't... People don't even read that stuff because everybody already knows many people have heard of motorcycle accidents. But somebody getting a divorce uh, may want to know about the implications of that personal injury settlement that's getting ready to close in a, in a bankruptcy or divorce. Or, or a criminal defendant may want to know, you know, I'm ordered to pay all this restitution. What about homesteading so I can avoid paying it? You know, what can I do you know, from a bankruptcy angle? So, you know, we really could be doing some really cool stuff, which we're still not doing, which I'm always talking about. I'm hoping somebody will like send me a a sample question like like a bar exam question saying, you know, X, Y, and Z happen, discuss. Because then I'll do my discussion from my point of view under California law, and then I'll forward it to another attorney. And let him discuss and let him discuss and add his links and his social signal. So we have a huge article, you know, that's like a thousand words or more that we can throw up onto the site or onto one of our own websites. You know, this is this kind of stuff that nobody's doing, but people are doing right now and just completely take over. It's the same exact thing they do on Moz. It's the same thing Mike Blumenthal does on his local search site. No reason why we can't all be doing the same thing. And the cool thing is, is since we all are, like, wanting to make sure we're just posting quality content because we don't want to get hit by any bad algo signals or anything, you know, we know it's going to be a quality article that has some thought put into it. It's not going to be from some article spinner in the Philippines. It's really going to be some good stuff that we did ourselves. And remember, it's not quantity anymore. It's quality. Uh, so stop thinking in terms of how many backlinks can I get. I'd rather have one link on the homepage of Fine Law than a thousand links from uh, you know a bunch of low quality sites that are thin that hardly have any backlinks. So if we can make this site into a juggernaut like a Fine Law. Um, you know, we'll be able to get that same effect, but with the added benefit of a site that's run by attorneys or consumers, not run by someone in Minnesota who wants to charge you a thousand dollars for them to pay an article spinner to post something on someone else's website for you that's part of their group. I just don't think that's going to fly, and eventually, uh, Google's going to figure that out. They're going to they're going to put an end to that stuff. So, any, anybody have any questions? You want to talk about anything else? All right. Well, if not, you guys all got a lot of food for thought of stuff we can do to help each other. So, you know, I'll talk to Andre about getting a uh, legal torch squared away uh, with a new template. And, uh, you know, email me or send me some private messages if you have any other ideas or you can come up with anything else that you think will help us as a group, you know, make this thing grow. Look at the video 
from Vegas on how to do your own magazine, uh, you should all you should all have at least a bi-monthly firm magazine. You should all be set up on that email program that every month sends an email to prospective or former clients and friends that has a copy of your PDF magazine. The, the, the latest edition of Scroggy Criminal Defense is out. Check it out. So here's the latest California Ninth Circuit case on search and seizure. Here's here's my latest victory in Central District Court. You know here here you know here, here's uh here's what not to say in a discussion you know with the prosecutor. Here's what to say. Um, you know why my experience why, why it's better to hire an attorney who's already been a prosecutor if you're handling federal cases. You know professional courtesy goes a long way. Whatever the article is going to be. Um, but you should have a firm magazine, not just blog posts, a real magazine that someone can actually print and upload that's a crawlable PDF. It's part of the ranking signal Google's looks like. Authoritative treatises are huge. You should be doing them in PDFs and uploading them on, on uh, other websites that allow you to upload PDFs. So get those PDFs out there. Don't just think that blog posts are enough. They're not. It's all part of the algo. Social signals. PDFs, blog posts, you know, treatises, journals, all that stuff. It has that's all part of. If you read Dave Amerland's book, it's all part of uh, of the semantic web. Um, we still need backlinks. The backlinks are becoming less and less significant. It, it's not that they're not significant; it's just they're becoming less significant. So we need to have a grouping of many, 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 many different types of things that Google's crawling and looking for. Uh, to make your brand stand out, and again, what about a mobile app Mike, for Legal Torch? Well, you know that a dot mobi, it's it's already uh, set up as a um, responsive theme. And the problem. No, with I mean an actual app. That's a good idea. An app. Well, send me an email, man. You know, and I'll uh, I'll talk to Andre about it, or send Andre an email directly and find out what the cost would be to develop something. Well, I know somebody that that does it I don't know what they would charge but I mean I'm thinking something just as simple as you have the posts the ability to ask a question and then author links okay. I mean it doesn't have to be a complicated app okay I mean I'm just talking about something simple that's All right. more than just a, a mobile enabled site, uh, but it, something like that shouldn't really cost that much, I mean, if you're not having that many features to it. Well, a ask your buddy if maybe we can work something out. Maybe, you're, maybe your friend is interested in, in other ways. I mean, you know, some people are happy to help us. Some people are happy to help us just to have a chance uh, to be able to throw up a blog post on our site. Because we, you know, we've already got a pretty good Alexa rating on the Circle Legal Trust site, and it's an authority site for attorney marketing. So they could actually get clients. So a lot of these big hitters, you know, who are connected with Google, come on because they realize that we're now an authority, and, and they just want to have the the brand mention and the semantic relationship between the Circle Legal Trust and their marketing companies. So it, it may be you can get a work a trade out, for example, or no, establish it. A strategic partnership with someone. It, he could care less about that. Okay. okay. <laughs> but I can. I will talk to him and see. Uh, if I don't talk to him before, I will see him in December, uh, and I can talk to him uh, about it and see what I can work out with him. Sounds cool to me, man. I, I, I love that idea, and that's what I, you know, I just would like it if everybody could just take the initiative, come up with ideas, you know, uh, well, let's see, uh, one is none, two is one, you know, two or more is one, and it's just so true, so, um, you know, if we can, you know, like the Roman, uh, you know, they had all the, the branches tied together, if you have just one, it snaps, but you tie them all together, and you can't break it, and I think they have the same symbol in Congress now on the wall, you know, the, the hatchet with the the reeds around it, and it's the same thing, you know. If all of us can collectively bring these ideas forth, I think we should be able to really build this into something magnificent, especially if you're all technically savvy, because most lawyers are not. 
And you need to be, just like you pass the bar exam, you should have no problem mastering WordPress, you should have no problem understanding how to put together a PDF, just basic stuff. Um, and if we can all be technically savvy, be idea man, and bring it all to the collective, um, you know, collectives only work when people are all putting forth maximum effort. You know, and in this case, um, if we can all do that, uh, we should be able to have uh, something really special. And we already do. I mean, a lot of our guys are have ranking that's just off the hook. You know, I rank for stuff that's just crazy. And that's even with constant negative SEO attacks. So clearly, the social signals and, and the stuff that I've been able to do with you guys has helped me a lot. And, and like these newbies and stuff, I mean, they're going to be blown away when they see what happens with this thing. But your picture, your big gun in the kitchen, had seventy some comments last night. There you go. That's right. And that's the thing, you know, you got to think outside the box. Um, I do civil rights litigation as well, and the Second Amendment is a fundamental right. It's actually a civil right to keep and bear arms. And so well, I think you were smart to stay out of those conversations. I was <laughs> reading some of them. It sounded like some of them were going to go find each other and give each other. Yeah, you know, you, people get really emotional over stuff like that because it's so fundamental to their their feeling of being an American. You know, it's, it's like, are you I think somebody was that's adding, what that's what's called. So I'm able to evoke an emotional response and get a lot of followers and a lot of clicks. And, you know, not all these guys are, you know, 100%. And just like a lot of lawyers. I know I'm not 100% all the time. I, mean, I know I'm kind of crazy. But, you know, if you can think outside the box and come up with something like that, like, are you a, like, for example, you're a coach, Jeff. I mean, I would have pictures of me coaching, um, things like that, things you like. A gun guy like me, of course, a, cool, a picture of a cool gun with a comment. Uh, you know, people like pictures, and things that are unique. If you're a car guy, you like, you, you know, classic cars, pictures of you standing next to classic cars. You like tanks, a picture of you sitting on top of a tank, um, something that signifies strength, which is why I like the tank. You know, because people are, wow, that, that attorney's so cool. He's on a tank. He's, you know, he's talking about being a straight shooter and going to war for me. That's the kind of guy I want to hire. And I really am that way. I mean, I really do go to war for people when I hire them. Because they don't hire me. I hire them. <coughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, I, I, I just, you know, I, I want to I lead them into battle. And that's kind of the mentality that I have. And so that's not going to work for all you guys, you know. But something that fits your personality, uh, if you want to get followers and a lot of pluses and stuff, come up with something really cool like that. You know, you can even add like a logo uh, on a picture. Google allows you to edit the picture right there in their own editor. So it's, when you upload a picture, you can actually add comments or add a title to it right there. It's real easy. You just do stuff with your iPhone all day long. That's all I do. I sit in my kitchen, take a picture of my rifle, and you know, talk about the latest. Uh, you know. Neil and Yi trying to find some other way to prohibit us from our lawful rights to bear arms and trash Neil and Yi a little bit, and I'll get a thousand, you know, votes on that. And so you guys can do the same kind of thing. Um, you just got to find something that's cool, like that. If you went to a trade show, you know, you standing next to a hot girl with a comment, like, you know, my, my latest potential client, what do you think? Should I represent her? You know, whatever, something fun. Uh, that'll help you get some followers. I don't want to, you know, I'm kind of going off topic here, but the idea is the ongoing theme that I've been trying to throw out at you guys, what Google wants is what makes you different? What makes Anthony Costelli different? Well, right away, I know that he's a biker, that he's, he's old school, he kind, he's kind of like, you know, kind of reminds me of somebody I would meet, you know, if I went to like a Grateful Dead concert, real down to earth, cool guy, you know, um, you know, Lapin, you know, he looks like the Terminator. You know, look, you guys, you can build off that stuff, you know, and make yourself different, make yourself stand out. What makes Eli different? He's totally crazy. You know, he's got guns all over the place, tanks, you know, he's a Marine, he's, he goes to parades and helps injured vets find jobs. You know, that's what makes Eli different. You know, what makes you different? What, what do you do? Do you help rescue animals from the animal shelter? Um, do you have a picture of, of you rescuing animals from an animal? Do you have a picture of you kissing a baby? You know, 
what makes you different? And so always, always, always be thinking about what sets you apart and what makes you different from other attorneys. You know, if I was a former prosecutor, I would have pictures of me um, when I was younger as a prosecutor and then have a, you know, do like slideshow, the progression, uh, what made me decide to stop prosecuting and, and work on the side of, of defendants. Um, here's me uh, in North Dakota. I'm also a biker. I ride. You know, here's me in North Dakota, right, and with a bunch of riders. Freedom, liberty. You know, people like that. It's part of being an American. You know, the hair in your face. Why I help hate helmet laws. Why they suck. You know, why? You know, why do we need a nanny state? You know, I, I fight for the for the real Americans. You know, if you want to ride without a helmet, that's up to you. It's not up to your nanny, the government. You know, when you get pulled over, you have to engage in a consensual encounter with cops. Hell no! You know, but do it in a nice way so you don't get beat. Let me tell you how to do it. Let, let me tell you how to answer a question to a cop without answering the question. You know, like what purpose does my destination and arrival point have to do with the, the purpose with this incident stop, officer? I mean, here's my license and registration. You know, my, my attorney's already told me that I can't answer any other questions. I don't want to be disrespectful, but here's the info. You know, is there anything else I can help you? Should we call your sergeant out and you know, be nice? Whatever, but you got to come up with something that sets you apart. Um, there's a really funny video, by the way. By uh, it's a divorce attorney video by uh, that UFC fighter. I posted it a couple of times. I'll find it. Post it on my profile today. Videos are awesome. It's uh, Randy Couture, and he's Randy Couture, divorce attorney. And you know, he, so he's on the phone. He's in a suit. There's all these books around him, and uh, he starts joking. You know, he's he's like, "What? Your husband doesn't want to pay you? I'll choke him! Oh, I'll do whatever I have to!" You know, and it's like, "Whoa! You know, this guy's crazy." You can do the same kind of thing. You know, that's really funny. That's a parody on attorneys. You know, that makes you look like you're not just some scumbag attorney. You know, like average joke or funny video. I've done a couple of really funny videos where I got like this this guy, uh, a biker, who's a drummer for like some some punk band. He comes he's like, hey brother, what's going on? You know, shaking my hand. You know, I got hurt right, man. Yeah, brother. How can you help me? And I'm like, I'll fight for you. You know, I'm, I'm crazy. Just like y'all do whatever it takes. I, I ride in Mulholland all the time. So I've done some funny videos like that. They get a lot of clicks and I've gotten clients from them. And, and I get a lot of jarheads and bikers. Because they all want to hire me because they can tell that I got a few screws loose, you know, like them. <laughs> but people like that kind of stuff. I mean, look at Tony. You know, he's just like totally different and unique. And he's and, and look at how he's just kicking ass on social media. The guy's got to be at least fifty years old, and, he, and he's you know, and, and he and he knows social media, and he knows how to optimize sites, and, and he's just out there, you know, and he knows how to how to identify with young people, and he puts himself out there as a unique person. He's not like some stuffed shirt attorney. So um, yeah, set yourself apart somehow, some way, um, and then you can also put in your bios and descriptors on your sites. You know what makes our firm different? Well, you know, we were at the North Dakota Biker Fest. Here's a picture. Click here. You know. Um, you know, we've led the way at the Circle of Legal Trust. Uh, we were we were voted Criminal Defense Attorney Federal of the Year. Here's our trophy. You know, all all this cool stuff. You know, really focus on that. Uh, that's a big thing right now on all of your websites. Uh, what makes you different? It's huge. Get that on there. Okay, so the other stuff, guys. Here we go. Talking about. All right, I'm going to stop the recorded part.